Yo, what's going on out there, everybody? Hope you guys are enjoying the marathon so far. Time is going to start on this game after I skip the initial text box and the tank starts moving. It's not really exact. It doesn't matter, it's going to be a bad time anyways. <laughs> But yeah, let's uh let's get this started, shall we? So for anybody unfamiliar with this game, this is Blaster Master Zero. It's a uh it's a modern reboot of the classic game for NES. The first part's gonna look really familiar if you're familiar with the original game at all, but after you get out of the first stage, it just completely changes it up from the original. I see the Freds in chat as well. Thanks. Thanks everybody for spreading the Fred. And uh, yeah, like I said, as soon as I cancel out the, uh, the first text box, time will start. I'll try to uh, somewhat give you a countdown, but it's gonna be hard. Yeah, I'm gonna cancel this out and the tank's gonna start moving, then you can start the timer. And start. So yeah, again, if you're familiar with the original game in any way, shape, or form, a lot of this is gonna look super familiar. The first stage is pretty much a carbon copy of the first stage from the original. This is personally my game of the year for 2017. I realize I'm biased because I'm a bit of a Blaster Master fan, but this was my personal game of the year for 2017. It was dirt cheap to buy. The game itself is only $10. DLC characters are $1.99 a piece. And yeah, I mean, oh man, that troll. That Metroid had it out for me. It's not a big deal, though. I'm going to hit retry here. If you hit retry in the menu, the game puts you back at the most recent checkpoint, and it puts you there with full health. So, costs you a couple seconds, but keeps you safe. Yeah, as I was saying, this game is dirt cheap, and it's the greatest Blaster Master game since the original. By far. I, I would put this up there with the original, if not even better. They did such a, a good job making this into a more modern game. You watched my run at AGDQ? Nice. Yeah, that run was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. I'm glad Shantae won the character choice war, too. Ah, that was a bad boss fight, but I kind of can't do a good boss fight right now because I can't really mash that fast. I kind of have a bit of a shoulder injury right now that's kind of stopping me from being able to mash. Uh, this game's available for Switch and 3DS. That was Mother Brain. By killing that boss, it gave me a, a weapon upgrade for my tank, and that weapon upgrade is going to allow me to kill a, a wall monster coming up in a minute, which is blocking my access to Area 2. In addition to also making the, uh, the tank's cannon look different and do 50% more damage. Yeah, there's a demo for this game on Switch as well. So you can download the demo and try it out before you actually make the plunge and buy it. But yeah, I mean, it's... If you're into, like, 
classic platforming. This is just an amazing modern platformer. So now in area two, this is where the level design starts taking a pretty drastic uh, deviation from the original game. Uh oh, make the jump. So a few interesting changes they made to the game here. You might notice my sub weapon meter is kind of auto recharging. That's the first major difference from the original game. In the original game, your sub weapons all had their own independent ammo counts, and your hover meter was just a hover meter, and uh, it recharged by grabbing hover pickups that enemies drop. This game, your sub weapon and your hover meter share the same bar and it auto recharges over time. You can still refill it through pickups and drops from enemies, but it also self replenishes. So coming up is the next dungeon area. This is a very risky part of this run. Um, there's a really fast strat to damage boost through all the damaging lava tiles here. Um, I'm not going to do the riskiest of the strats because I'm out of practice with it. I haven't really been grinding this game like I used to. And it really doesn't save that much time and again it's just super risky. So I'm going to go with a uh, bit slower and safer of a strat. My D-pad's not agreeing with me. All of these rooms with the uh, the fading purple lava, those are on like a global cycle from the time I enter the dungeon. So like messing up any of the rooms throws the entire cycle out of whack. Normally I would damage boost straight up through all that and try to hit a fast cycle, but again, for sake of not dying and having a decent marathon run, we're just gonna entirely skip the fast strat. Still almost died. That would have been fun. Now on to Krabulous. He looks the same as his NES counterpart, but the fight is completely different. I'm going to try to circle around him while mashing him down, because when I kill him, his drop is going to be at the top of the room, so I can save time walking to the drop by getting there during the fight. Yeah, he's not turning. He gave me bad RNG. Not much I could do about that. If he if he starts tracking you quickly, you can circle around the room while mashing and kill him in a spot where you're pretty much already standing where the drop ends up. It's not a huge time loss though. We're still fine. So killing that boss gave us another turret upgrade. You might notice my shots are all colorful and glowing now. In addition, they can break uh they can break destructible blocks. And those are exactly coincidentally what is blocking the route to area 3. A neat thing about the DLC characters in this game 
their normal attack outside of the tank can break destroyable blocks, so some of the characters you can entirely skip area to. And uh, other characters you can take a back door route through to, saving time. I don't know why I jumped out of the tank back there. I'm so used to the DLC characters having to jump out of the tank and hit the blocks real quick. So this stage actually has a very similar graphical theme to Area 3 from the original game, but they kind of added a new gimmick to it, which you're seeing right here, these conveyor belts, and also there's these, uh, these walls that you raise and lower by manipulating the conveyor belts. That's like a new gimmick they added to uh, the reboot. There's actually a few stages where they added stuff to it. Like Area 5's gimmick is there's water currents that can take you away now. I guess Area 4 really doesn't have a new gimmick, it's still just a, a sewer. Keeping these guys alive to stop them from spitting out more in a second here. That way I can do this quick strat and not have to lower the wall all the way. $1,011. Can we get to all ones? Let's hope so. That would be awesome to get that high up on, on the donation count. Thank you to everybody who's donated to this, uh, this marathon, by the way. It's definitely uh, a very noble cause. I messed up. Get up there, dude. I didn't feel like going back and hitting the conveyor belt, so we just kind of shot the wall. Which is definitely a, a valid strat. Oh, I missed the turret. I'm gonna skip this save point. The reason I'm skipping it you'll see after the boss fight here. Coming up on this boss, this is the first major RNG hurdle in the run. This boss has a number of patterns and only a handful of them can actually be one cycled. In practice, um, like during actual PB grinds and stuff, I've seen time swings of around 30 seconds based off of pattern on this boss. And this is the worst possible pattern I could've got. Literally, two of the worst patterns I could have got in sequence. Oh well, the boss is dead, that's the important thing. So that's going to give us the hover upgrade. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go into our menu, hit save, and then after the save completes, we're going to go back to this the main menu here. When you load a save and quit out of the game and all that, the game drops you back to whatever your most recent checkpoint was with all your progress. Because I never hit a save point in that stage, and the uh, and the boss is a tank view boss, I never entered a dungeon which never changed my checkpoint. The things that change checkpoints are entering a new side view area, um, hitting a save point, or entering a dungeon. And because I never entered a dungeon or hit a save point, the game still had my checkpoint at the entrance to Area 3, so by saving and reloading after the boss fight, I save warped back to the beginning of the area and saved having to backtrack to the beginning. Unfortunately, we can't cut out all of the backtracking, though. Just like the original game, now that I got hover, the only way to proceed and make it to Area 4 is to go way back to the very first screen of the game.
visit our buddy the wall monster again. Unfortunately, the wall monster didn't give me any hover, so that's going to lead to me having to do some slightly slower movement throughout these next couple screens. I might not have enough hover to, to skip a platform at the end of this screen, which isn't a huge time loss, but yeah. That drop definitely helps. We're going for it. And we barely got it. Alright, now on to area four. This is a uh, kind of a sewer themed level, just like the original. And just like Area 3, we're going to, uh, we're going to save warp after the boss. We need to come back to this room when we get the key from the boss anyway, so we're going to hit the save point and never hit any more save points for the, the rest of the stage. Alright, Sham. Thanks for hanging out, man. Good luck at work tomorrow. So again, skipping that save point to preserve my checkpoint in the key room so I can save warp back later. Sorry for the lack of commentary during this stage. It's some of the hardest movement in the run, so just trying to concentrate. Now on to, to our buddy Fred. This is a really long boss fight, so get ready, guys. Bye bye, Fred. Alright, so again, we're gonna save, do the game's built in soft reset, and go back to the menu, load our save, and it'll put us back in that key room, which saves having to backtrack through all that awful platforming you guys just watched me go through. That suicide jump, though. Have you missed Zoidberg? Nope. Zoidberg is the next boss we're gonna see. So your your character outside of the tank in this game suffers fall damage, and it doesn't take very much of a fall to completely just instantly kill you. That's why that jump at the end of Area 4 there is as scary as it is, because if you miss grabbing the ladder, you end up either going into the water and losing a lot of time, or hitting the ground and just exploding. Why not, Zoidberg? Um, you know, in this game, he's not that bad. Back in the day before the, uh, 
consistent setup for the glitch was found. That boss was a nightmare in the NES any percent runs back in the day. That's why not, Zoidberg. This game, he's okay. Actually, let me rephrase that. Depending on what character you're using, he can still be kind of a jerk. So... Everything I learned about speedrunning, I learned from Ocarina of Time, so we're just gonna swim backwards everywhere and try to save some time. Seems like a legit strat, right? Backwards is always faster. Now I just need somebody to throw a bomb at me so I can super swim or super slide or something. I can do a damage boost here to save a little bit of time. We're going to skip it just to be safe. Bust out the Ocarina of Time strats again. Alright, so this is the next RNG hurdle in the run. You might notice my my gun weapon energy up in the top left corner. I need that to be full by the end of this dungeon. For that to happen, I need all of these enemies to cooperate and give me gun drops. They never like to do that. Ever. If I don't end up at a, a full gun meter by the end of the stage, it's not a big deal. I just have to be at that by the boss, but it means I have to farm at the end of this dungeon, so it ends up losing a lot of time. We have two more enemies that can drop stuff for us. Nothing. So even if this next enemy drops a large, we'll be one short. We're gonna have to do a little bit of farming. One drop, still pretty, uh, pretty crappy. We're gonna go for an insane cycle skip here. Maybe? Nope. That's a really tight cycle to hit. Wow, apparently I can't hit the easy one either. Just ignore this terrible gameplay, guys. But no, for the longest time, the entire community for this game thought skipping that cycle early was impossible. And then uh, Shining Dragoon accidentally did it one day and realized it wasn't. So normally I would use my uh, shield weapon and deflect all these shots, but I don't have a full enough gun meter for that, so I have to play it a little bit slow. He saw nothing. Wow, D-pad, what are you doing to me? So yeah, we're gonna have to leave and re-enter this place a few times. No, we won't. The game decided to be nice and give us a large drop. So now we can go fight Zoidberg. Yeah, I'm so horribly out of practice in this game. I have not been consistently grinding it lately. <coughs> I definitely did some warm-up and some de-rusk before this run, but I'm not in practice like I usually would be. Good fight. Got him before he was able to move. So, that gave us the dive gear upgrade for our tank. That allows the tank to uh, function as a, as a uh, submarine, pretty much. So 
So now we're going to make our way back to the tank and use our new swimming ability in the tank to proceed to Area 6. the way they kind of lock you out of accessing Area 6 early is you can't get the tank through all this and you can't... You can swim through this, but once you get to the next room, you can't actually get to the door to Area 6. Some of the DLC characters have abilities outside their tank that lets them get to that door, so you can skip Zoidberg, but not all of them. On to Area 6, the token on, the token ice level that's in all platformers. This, uh, this is a really, really rough part of the run, actually. You're hoping for good hover drop RNG throughout the entire run to be able to do the most optimal strats. Um, there's a lot of really tight platform cycles that you're trying to hit. Who can skip Zoidberg? Uh, Gunvolt? and Ikoro are the only two that can skip Zoidberg. In terms of who can skip the most, it's Gunvolt. Gunvolt can skip stuff that none of the other characters can. This, this part of the stage isn't really that bad. It's some parts coming up in the very near future here where things start getting really nasty. So we're gonna abuse that retry function. That refills our hover meter when we get back in the tank and that definitely helps out quite a bit for the next couple rooms. Kind of hoping for a large hover drop. I was really hoping for a large hover drop. Which means we have to do some slightly slower strats throughout the next couple rooms. We're going to damage boost through these spikes and try to catch this platform cycle. We did. Very nice. There's another really difficult platform cycle coming up in this room as well. Might get it. No! Ran out of hover and then failed jumping up to it, so had to wait out a cycle. And you've seen Fred laying on the floor dead there. Sad moment. Rip Fred. Hey, we got that cycle. That's a really hard one to hit. And then we missed the free one. Is it just me or does the uh, amount of liquid that Stay Hydrated Bot says you're supposed to have drunk always like seem really small? It'll say like, you've been streaming for 22 hours. You should have consumed 32 ounces of water. Like what? I should probably be at, like, a gallon by now.
So I hope all you guys watching out there are fans of RNG, because there's some more coming up. <laughs> So this next boss is a series of, like, camera eyes encompassing the whole outside of the room. And when they open and shut- I'm just gonna hit this to be safe. When they open and shut is determined by RNG. I gotta hope they all stay open long enough for me to kill them quickly. I have a gun now that spreads and kills them all at the same time, but I still gotta hope they stay open to let me do that. Stay hydrated butt. Wow, I messed up. This is really bad. That was an awful boss fight, but whatever. I missed my first shot, which... meant I didn't get any damage during the... the initial open when they're all open. Oh well. That boss gave us the wall upgrade, which... allows us to scale walls and ceilings in our tank. Conveniently, they put this nice little back door route out of Area 6 to make it nicer to leave. Some characters can take this as the way into Area 6 and save some time. But now that we got the wall upgrade, we have to go all the way back to Area 3. This is kind of where the game takes a drastic change from the original. Um, 40 minutes behind schedule? Aren't you running 40 minutes ahead of schedule? Because my run was supposed to be an hour from when I started. But yeah, the... Wow, I got the pixel... The one pixel horizontal drop there. That's crazy. The biggest change that I'm referring to, though, is in the original game, to find Area 7, you had to go to Area 2, which had the entrance to Area 7. Then after clearing Area 7, you would leave Area 7, go through Area 2, and back to Area 3, which had the entrance to Area 8. This game, the entrance to Area 7 is in Area 3, and you just naturally continue on to Area 8 from the end of Area 7. Time zone confusion? Yeah, okay, that must have been it, because I was under the impression my run was supposed to be 9.55 Atlantic time and 10.55 Eastern. I mean, it's no worries, I was ready to go regardless. Shout out to Jam Evil, who was the first to realize that going through the currents there was faster than taking the intended top route. Well, now we're ahead of these. Oh. Yeah, I had it all backwards. So yeah, I'm just dumb. That that's that's what it is. Don't mind me. I fail. Time zones are hard, indeed.
Sounds like I need some sleep. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily that I'm tired. It's more just that I have zero energy because I'm in a lot of pain right now because I kind of blew my shoulder out earlier. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier in the run, that my mashing was going to suck because I, yeah, my, my shoulder is all kinds of screwed up right now. What is this time zone? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of speedrunning times, you guys should all check out B-Ran Belmont in chat sometime. He just put up an insane time in Rondo of Blood any percent, beating the world record. Before long, he'll probably take my Maria world record in that game as well. So, yeah. Yeah, now we're back in Area 3. Which means we can go on to Area 7. Okay, on to Area 7. As far as the theme of the stage, it's similar to the original. However, like most of the other stages, they added a gimmick to it. The gimmick in Area 7 is stealth elements. There's a lot of spots in the stage where there's like spotlights and enemies that are trying to spot you and if you get seen, everything comes at you at once. They intend you to try to sneak around those and not deal with it. However, it's faster to just trigger it and try to move through it quickly, so we'll see the first example of that here. Quick three-way missile takes out all the enemies that drop out and opens the gates back up. Normally you're supposed to get out of your tank, climb down a ladder, do a whole out of the tank platforming segment, and yeah, it's just slow. The dungeons, the, the dungeon areas in this level also have some uh, stealth elements to them as well. There's one particularly nasty one that we luckily won't have to see in this category. You only see it in 100%, and it's just awful. Metal Gear level, pretty much. See if we can get the fast strat here. Probably not. Hey, we got it. Shit, that's bad. I was holding up, but the game thought I was holding diagonal for some reason. That's gonna throw this entire room off. All these spotlight cycles are... Eh, actually it wasn't that bad. Normally, if you mess up the cycles in that room, it, it turns bad really quick, and fortunately, that was not the case. So, yeah, that room was a train wreck, but it, it could have been worse. Ideally, you just move forward the entire time in that room, you never stop. Just to be safe, I'm going to hit retry here. This is another room that I'm supposed to try to move stealthily through. We're not we're not gonna do that. We don't have time for that crap. We're gonna manipulate these enemies up and then just use our striker to just burst them all down with the chain lightning. It's funny because my first like blind casual playthrough of this game when it first came out, I never used this gun because it just seemed weak. It doesn't do much damage on its own. You can only have one shot on screen, and it spreads to all enemies, but it's not really that useful. And then you realize that you can get close to an enemy and mash with it, and it just becomes the most overpowered gun in the game. Hands down. On to the skeleton boss. 
Anybody who remembers the original game probably remembers the boss monster that was on the cover of the game, which was originally an overhead view dungeon boss. For this game, they bumped him to the stage 7 boss and made him into a side view boss, but this is the same boss, the plutonium boss, or as they renamed him here, skeleton boss. Give me a good pattern please, don't troll, don't troll. If you get hit during any of that platforming, you can't land back on the platform and you just fall to your death because of the fall damage. Alright, just to be safe here, we're going to hit retry again. I really don't need to hit retry here, but it refills my health and sub-weapon energy at the cost of a, a couple seconds, so seems like a pretty good safe strat right now. Deaths in Area 8 are extremely time-consuming, so I prefer to not die here. It just got boned. Boo! <laughs> nah, that was actually a good one, Drunken Draconian. It was it was a worthy pun, I'll let it pass. It was humorous. Okay, now now somebody ban this man, please. <laughs> we gave you your one free pass, buddy. <laughs> Alright guys, what do you want to see in chat? I'm hitting retry to re refill my health here. Super risky strats or safe strats? I'll give it five seconds to get your results. Risky or safe? Risky it is. So there's a good chance I'm going to die here. Because we're taking the left route. Which is suicide. Literal, literal suicide. Still not in the clear yet because I have to skip that save point, which means no refills for me. And I'm down to 2 HP. Crap. <laughs> This is bad. This is really bad. Just remember, you guys voted for the risky strats. <sighs> okay, now we're gonna do the safe strats. Like I said, left route is suicide. Anybody who's interested in running this game, don't, don't go left route. Just, just don't. See how much nicer the right route was, and you get this nice save point to refill your health if you need to. Just, just go to the right. Screw the seven seconds that it saves, it's not worth it. Yeah, we're coming up on the end of the game here, guys. This is the second to final dungeon. Oh crap, that's not good. So this dungeon, I'm going to use my striker, aka the lightning gun, to uh, take out these enemies as quickly as possible without having to waste much time taking them out. I really, really need some gun drops. There we go. Thank you, game. You listen. 
And I guess I'm off the bowling team, B-Ran. I'm sorry. I suck at bowling anyway, so you aren't really missing out on much. This is anybody's cell. It's not that hard of a fight when it goes right. It can go wrong really fast, though. This boss gives me a key. That's all. A key. That key lets me get to the final area in Area 8, which takes me to the final boss. Which, final boss is kind of misleading. The final boss for this category. I'm at 1 HP. This is... There's no way this can possibly go poorly. That's <laughs> what I get for talking. <laughs> but yeah, um, in any percent, the game ends after the, the next boss. Um, the original NES game also ends after the Area 8 boss. However, if you get 100% completion in this game, you go on to an all-new area, Area 9, which is just awesome. Like, I don't even know how to explain it other than just amazing. Forces you to use all of your tank's abilities to the fullest. Has some really cool boss fights and refights. It's just really, really, really well done. And you get a, like, upgraded version of your tank for all of Area 9, which is, like, just...